Good evening, everybody, and uh, welcome to another episode of, v of the VBrem Bag. Uh, tonight, we are going to be doing a continuation of our Python for DevOps series, talking with Python developers and learning how to level up our skills. Um, tonight, uh, we're going to be talking with Chrissy Rain Wainwright. Um, she's going to be talking about Python debugging with PDB. Um, Chrissy and I met at PyCon this year. Actually, she works with Calvin HP, who did another one of our Python series. So I have been working my way through the chain of amazing developers over at Six Feet Up, and and uh, Chrissy's next on my list. Um, it, Hello. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Chrissy, how are you doing tonight? Good. Awesome, awesome. Okay, so uh, before we get started, a couple of quick housekeeping notes. Get in on the conversation. Uh, if you at the brown bag, um, I will be paying attention to Twitter, or if you hashtag the brown bag, I'll also be paying attention to that as well. Um, I will be fielding questions from the live audience, and we will also have our Q&A at the end. Um, so again, this evening we have Chrissy Wayne. Why am I having problems saying that Chrissy Wainwright? <laughs> She's at. You're C not. You're not the only one. <laughs> Thank goodness I didn't drink before this. Now, Chris, Chrissy Wayne White, and she's C D W. No, um, and I, I have the same name though. It's it's a C and a W. You think I wouldn't have an issue with this? I I am of course Chris Williams. I am at Mistwire. You can you can make fun of me there. Um, so <laughs> with, with that, now now that you all see that I have a speech impediment, let me kick over the power to Mrs. Wainwright. Uh, All right, you have the power. All right, make sure I'm sharing the correct screen before I actually show it. Debugging with PDB is what I see. Awesome. All right, so I'm gonna talk about debugging your Python code using PDB. Uh, as Chris said, my name is Chrissy Wainwright, and I can say it without messing up because I've said it way for better than many years. <laughs> <laughs> Like I said, many other people have also stumbled and say Wayne White and sipping what it is. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm glad I'm glad I'm not the only one though. <laughs> All right. So a little bit about who I am. Uh, as Chris mentioned, I do work for Six Feet Up, and that is not what I want there. Um, I work from home. I live in Arkansas. So while Six Feet Up is in Indiana. Um, they do stuff with IndiePy. I'm not really affiliated with IndiePy, but I am co-organizer of FayettePy here uh, in Fayetteville, Arkansas. Mm. Uh, I'm also vice president of the Plone Foundation. Plone is an open source content management system, and so the foundation is the nonprofit organization that, that protects Plone, the, the brand. Uh, and also, I am a Python developer. Uh, I also wanted to point out that this presentation was originally done by one of my former colleagues, Clayton Parker, who's actually Calvin's brother. Hi, Clayton. Uh, he put together all the slides and everything, and so I, I took what he had and I've updated it a little bit, especially for Python 3, because it's been a while. But he did this talk at PyCon a few years ago, also, and also PyOhio. Hmm. All right, so what is PDB? Uh, it is the Python debugger, so that is the PDB and it is an interactive debugging tool. And how do we get started with it? So we would set a trace directly in the code. So you can see the first line there, you import PDB and then do pdb.setTrace. Um, you don't normally do two Python, you know, two separate line things on one line like this. It's not very Pythonic, uh, but the idea is you're just putting it in your code temporarily to help you figure out bugs or figure out what you need to do with your code <clears throat> and remove it before actually committing any of the code. Um, and also new in Python 3.7 is you can just call breakpoint. Um, the advantage to using breakpoint over the pdb.setTrace is that you can set an environment variable that will ignore any breakpoints that you may accidentally have in your code, which can be very helpful. Uh, you can also start a script directly using PDB. So when you call the script, instead of just saying Python example.py, you would also pass in the dash M and PDB. And so we'll see ex exactly how that works a little bit later. All right, so I have some code and we'll throw a couple breakpoints in. <clears throat> and sorry, my voice is getting a little raspy. I do have a little bit of a cold. Hmm. All right, so I have a script here that I wrote just to give you a little bit of background on it. Um, at Six Feet Up, we use an app called Time Task for keeping track of all of the time that developers spend, you know, all of us spend working on a project, and that's what we use to build the clients. 
but I have started using another app called Timealer to actually track my time. Um, and then I needed some way to get the data from Timealer into TimeTask, and that's what this script does. All right, so I've thrown a couple breakpoints in there. And so now what? Uh, I can start my script. So I'm using pip env here. Um, so you can do pip env run uh, python, as it'll call the python in my local environment. Time transfer.py is the name of the script, and last week is just a variable that I can pass in. So it's going to look at all of my time entries from last week uh, and start going through them one by one. So I start running that, it'll think for a minute, and now I have a PDB prompt. So what can I do with that? Uh, we will talk about the common commands that will be used in PDB and how to navigate the stack and work through everything. So to start with, you can get some help. So you can just type in help. And this will show you all the commands that are available for PDB. Most of the commands have a short version. So you can see both help and H in the list. So I can type just H. I can also just type question mark and that will do, you can see each one of these is giving me the same output. Uh, if you want to learn more about any of these particular commands, uh, you would type help and then the name of that command. So you can even get help on help and it tells you what the help command does. Or if you want to know, for example, what list does, you could type help list. And so this explains, you know, how you would use this command and what are the different things that you can do with it. Hmm. So now let's look at the current context and this is what list does. So you can type list or L. Uh, most of the time I am going to be using the short version. So I'll, uh, I'm just gonna type in L. And so now it's showing me where we are in the code. So there's this little arrow here where I put in my breakpoint. So if we were to pull up the code, you can see, you know, all of this matches here, what we're seeing in uh, the command line. So it's showing me where I am uh, with the lines of context before and after. If I hit L again, um, it's now going to progress through the file, showing me the next 10 lines. So you can see where this ended at line 65 before we are now at line 66 and moving on. And I can keep hitting L and it'll keep going down through the file. Uh, if I want to go back up to where I currently am, I can do L space and then a dot. And it you know, goes back to what that first one looked like. Uh, you can also enter a specific line number. So if I wanna see what's going on at line 30, you can type L space 30. And that was showing me that in the middle with the lines before and the lines after it. Um, back to where I am, just to point out, the arrow is actually the next, the next line in the file. It hasn't actually evaluated this yet. So we're at the break point and whatever line it's pointing at has not yet been evaluated. Uh, we can also type LL, which is long list. And that is going to give us a lot more context. This is showing the entire current fu function that I'm in. So I'm in a function called prep data, and this is all of the code for that function. So the list command, it just is just showing us the code. It's not actually doing anything, but if we want to actually start stepping through the code, that is what next is for. So I could do just N. And now you can see the line, you know, it's only showing the current line here, um, but it's also telling me I'm in time transfer.py line 61, whereas before we scroll up a little bit, it was 10, would have told me we were at line 60. <laughs> it was way up here somewhere. There it is, line 60. So now this is, it's just actually stepping through the code. So now that previous line, I'm gonna type L, I like to do this a lot just to see exactly where I am. Now this line has been evaluated and now we're on to the next one. So we can now examine some variables and start um, figuring out what's going on with the code. So we're past vowels now, it has been defined, so I can type that in and it shows me exactly what that of what vowels is. It's a list, 
and here are all the values inside of vowels. Uh, if I type line, which isn't defined until you know the next line, uh, it's going to say it's, it's not defined yet because it hasn't actually been evaluated. Cool. Um, we can also use print to view the variables. Um, once again, a short command for this is p, so I can say p vowels, uh, and you can see the output for this is exactly the same as if I just say vowels. Um, so what is a reason that you would want to use print instead of just saying it? Um, well, it's going to help you to avoid running into the PDB reserved names. Um, if we look at, you know, what's available, for example, one of them is list. Um, now list is also an available Python function that we, you would use to turn, say, a string into a list. So if we s try to take current line, uh, which is one of the variables that has already been defined and turn that into a list using Python, uh, we're gonna get an error. Uh, it's not immediately clear what's going on here. In fact, I've done this and I had no idea what was going on. You know, I had to turn to Stack Overflow to tell me exactly what, what was actually wrong. And the fact is that um, it's trying to use PDB's list instead of Python's list. So you can use the print command to avoid that. So we can do p current line, and it's going to take that string and turn it into a list. Not very helpful in this case, but gives you a good idea of you know, what we can actually do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, something else you can do with that, you can also escape it. Um, so using exclamation point or bang, and then list current line, and it does the same thing. So let's see uh, what else we can do. Let's hit we're going to go down to next, the next line, because we want to look at line. So line here is a dictionary. Um, we can do p line that returns the same thing. But another function that we have available to us is pp, which is pretty print. And it makes it much easier to read. So this dictionary that it spit out at us, it's you know all just one line, which is wrapping. But if we do pp line, now it's showing each key value pair on a single line for each one. It makes it much easier to read. Um, but one thing to watch out for here, especially in Python 3, is that this spit this out to me with all of the keys in alphabetical order. Um, prior to Python, I think it's 3.6, um, dictionaries didn't have any ordering right. by default. So um, you know it didn't matter what it spit out here, but in but now dictionaries do keep their ordering. So that's just something to watch out for that um, the pretty print is going to show you alphabetical order and not necessarily the order of the dictionary. Gotcha. All right, so let's look some more at the, the variables that are available. So we can use the dir function so I'm going to say dir and line. Line is one of the variables that, that is available. And it's going to show me everything that I can do with that. So as we saw up here, line is a dictionary. So now what we're seeing here are the different functions and attributes that are available for, for this dictionary, for, for line. Um, you know, I don't know just by glancing at this what what type line is, but you know, I can get a good idea by looking through like, oh, I see items, keys, those usually refer just to, to dictionaries. Um, so I can try to call one of these. Now it's not also not clear um, which of these are attributes, which ones are functions. So if I try to type line.keys, that's one of the options. I'm going to get the thing that says built-in method keys of dict object, um, which isn't super helpful, but since it's saying keys is a method, that means I need to call it. So you can say line.keys um, and call it. Mm -hmm. And so now it's actually going to show me what the keys are inside of that dictionary. See, so we can also look at args, which this is going to spit out a big, huge thing. Um, if we scroll up, I can see um, it's saying data is one of the args because if I look at my code, the top of the function, data is the argument that is passed in. So saying args is going to show me all of the um, command line, all of the arguments that were passed to this function and what they are equal to. 
Uh, and then similarly, we can use dir again, but without passing it anything, it's not only going to show us, you know, the argument that was passed to the function, but also all of the uh, variables that I have defined in the function up to this point. Oh, neat. So if I go down, I'm going to hit next a couple more times, go down a couple more lines and say dir again. And now you can see that list is longer because more variables have been defined. Right. So uh, PDB, it is a Python interpreter, just as if you were to go to the command line, type in Python, and it brings up an interpreter. So you can write anything like as you would in Python here and see the result, like even, even math, like if you want to say three plus five, then it's going to say eight. But this is really helpful. Um, I use this a lot when I'm developing code, like not just debugging, but like I'll start a function, I'll pass it some, some data, and then before I even write any code, I'll throw in a PDB just to get to this point and so that I can start inspecting um, all of the data that's being passed in and um, figure out what I can do with it. So one of the things we have is cur line, which is short for current line. Um, right now it's a string. So looking at this, I can see there's a single quotation mark here and there's one here and then there's everything else in between. And let's say I wanna turn this into a list. So I can say, well, I can do dir on that if I you know, can't remember exactly how to do that. And I can see that there is split. So I could say current line that split. And I want to split on comma because uh, everything is comma separated in here and see what that looks like. Okay, I have a list, you know, I have the square brackets on the sides, but I have lots I have all these double quotation marks in here that I don't want. So I can refine this a little bit more. I can hit the up arrow and let's say I want to split on having the double, you know, the double quotation marks along with the comma. Hit enter and see what that gives me. Hey, this is a lot closer to what I want. Um, so, you know, as I work through this process, I'll um, figure out exactly what the code is that I need, then I can copy it from here and paste it into, into my actually my code that I'm actually writing. Hmm. Um, so in, in that, in fact, this is exactly how I wrote this piece when I wrote the script. And so eventually what I ended up doing was writing a list comprehension to make sure that I get all of those double quotation marks out. Um, so I'm for each item, I'm going to replace, take out the double quotation marks with nothing, replace them with nothing and still do that current line that split. Make sure I get all of those quotation marks just right. <laughs> all right, and there, that's what I actually want. I don't have any of those double quotation marks anymore, and I have a nice list. So I can just copy that uh, and paste that into my code when I'm ready. Uh, we can also repeat the last command uh, just by hitting return. So when we start, let's say we look at, we're going to list. Um, if I don't type in L and I just hit return, you can see it's just going to keep going down through the lines. It's going to repeat whatever that last command was. Oh, that's uh, and this, this works for about anything. So, I mean, even if I say like four times seven, hey, it's 28. If I hit return again, it's just going to keep telling me 28. So nice handy shortcut. All right, now let's say we want to continue the execution. Uh, so looking at my code, so we started at this breakpoint, we've hit next a few times, uh, which is just going through line by line. But let's say, okay, we're done debugging the code, we're done figuring out what we need to figure out. Uh, if we hit C, then that's just gonna continue on with the execution um, until either the file finishes or it hits the next breakpoint. So I hit C um, and it's showing me where I am. Now I've got PDB prompt again because at time transfer dot pi line 93, I had put in another breakpoint, which looking at list, we can see, hey, there it is. Um, that's very handy sometimes, especially if you forget that you put a PDB in your code and you're wondering. Um, so like I use with Plone, I, it has a post-mortem debugger built in. So if it hits an error, it just throws you at a PDB. But sometimes you forget that you put a PDB in the code and you have to, you know, 
look at list to see, oh, hey, there's a breakpoint there that I forgot I put in. Nothing's actually broken. Mm -hmm. And then we, if we hit C again, um, you can see now it's popped back up to line 59 because we are inside of a for loop. And so as long as you keep hitting C and that there are more lines to go through, it's just going to pop back and forth between the two breakpoints that I put in. Until the code naturally gets out of the for loop, or it'll just keep mm -hmm. it'll keep reiterating itself indefinitely. And until you get out of the for loop. Okay. So gotcha. for however many lines that there are, which in this case, we can do a figure out the length of lines. There are 113 lines to go through. Hmm. All right. So another thing we can do is actually step into a function. Um, what we've done so far with next. It just goes through line by line, evaluating each one. But step lets us actually step into a function, you know, wherever there is a function call. So I'm going to hit C until I get to there, line 93, where I can see that this, the next one here um, is calling a function called tt under project. If I hit N, it's just going to evaluate that line, define t under project. Uh, but let's say I want to actually step into this function. I would say S or step. And now you can see my context has changed. I am now inside of a different file called intervals.py at line 28. Um, and this is also telling me which function I'm on. You, you can see that's what it's been doing here. It gives you some nice context. And so now at this, go I'm, ahead. So, I'm sorry, and intervals.py was a module that you called into, into um, time transfer.py? Mm -hmm. Yep, it is one of the other files uh, that is part of this. So if I scroll up to the top, I can see from intervals import TT under project. Okay, I, I don't see import PDB though. Did, did you, do you not need to import PDB to, to do it? If to, you to... are using, if you're using breakpoint, you do not. Oh, okay, so you can just call breakpoint and that, that sends mm -hmm. you into PDB without having to import it. Okay, okay, right. thanks. Yep, like I said, that's new in Python 3.7. Um, oh, hold on. A couple, a couple of questions popped up real fast. Uh, oh, I'll, I'll say okay. I'll save that one till the end. Um, will that step through imported functions too? Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Concise answer. Yes, Graham. It will. <laughs> All right. So now I can examine this function some more and see what's going on. I can type args. Um, so that's going to show me, you know, the three things that are passed in there, or or not. Like details has a, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, if it isn't passed in, it defaults to an empty string. But I can see exactly what the arguments that were passed into this function. Mm -hmm. And then I can start, I can step through this. Let's see. I can see what my keys are. Uh, it's empty right now. Um, so, you know, that's going to depend on what happens. So this, just letting me inspect everything inside of this function without having to actually put a breakpoint in it. Gotcha. Um, now to skip to the end of the function, let's say, okay, I'm done inspecting what I need to look at here. I want to go back to where I was. We can return. So I hit R and you can see the first time it's not actually sending me back to the other, um, to the other file, but instead it puts me at the return of this function. Um, so if there's anything else that I want to inspect here, I have another chance to. Otherwise, if I'm completely done, I can type R again. Um, or just hit return, because that was my last command. Um, and now that puts me back in time transfer.py. And T under project has been defined. Now. At, the, at the next line, gotcha. Cool. Yep. All right, so let's say you want to get out. You're completely done doing everything. You can just type Q. And now it puts me back out at the command line. Very cool. All right, so now uh, we're going to do something slightly different. I'm going to take out these breakpoints that I had entered. And we're going to run this with the other way that I showed of doing the dash M PDB. So now you can see it puts me into the PDB prompt like right away at the very top of the file. Mm -hmm hasn't actually done anything yet. 
and we can set breakpoints directly in the P in PDB. So I can say B66. I'm telling it set a, a breakpoint at line 66, and then it tells me breakpoint one set at line 66. Uh, if I type in B with nothing else, it's going to show me all of the breakpoints that I currently have set here. So I do have one set at line 66. And then if I want to remove that, I can say CL1 because this is breakpoint number one. Now, does that actually add uh, uh, the break? Does it modify the code itself? Does it add breakpoint open print close print or, or is it just within the PDB? Um, it's just within the session. Gotcha. Okay. So I can add 10 breakpoints, and when I quit, then they all go away. Gotcha. Okay. So I hit B again, uh, and it returns nothing because I don't have any breakpoints set right now. Uh, but those breakpoints are going to do the same thing just as if I had put them into the code. Um, so now if I hit C, to con it'll continue the execution until it gets up to that breakpoint. And, and there it is. Uh, also allows us to set conditional breakpoints. So instead of just throwing a breakpoint into the code, we can say hit this breakpoint only if this condition equals true. Nice. So I can say put a breakpoint at line 89, uh, but only do that if T underbillable is true. And make sure you know you're doing an uh, checking if the two sides are equal and not in, um, an assignment. I made that mistake once, and it was hitting it every time, even though I knew T under billable was false. Mm. You need to actually, you know, check if it's equal to. Right, right. Well, you're you're saying true, but that's that's a lowercase T. Is is that is that the PDB version for true, or is that that's how you've defined true in your code? That's how it's done in this code only. It's not Pythonic at all. I don't recommend this, but that is what time task is expecting. So the the app that I'm sending all of my data to, it's expecting either a lowercase t or a lowercase f as a string. Oh, and okay. so that's, yeah, that's just what I'm setting here. Because uh, okay. billable time is either gonna be true or false. Gotcha. Uh, I can examine my breakpoints again. Um, you can see breakpoint number one is gone because I had cleared that out. Uh, but we have breakpoint number two, which it tells us has already been hit once. And then breakpoint number three, which I just set, and that it will only stop if T under billable is equal to T. Hmm. So if I hit continue a couple times, see it's hitting that first breakpoint or it's hitting number two a couple times before and going through the loop before we get to one that is set to T because the first couple are F. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now you can, if you want to do this in the code, uh, like if you're wanting to set everything in here, you can do it in here as well. Um, like if you just want to say if t under billable is a lowercase t, then do a breakpoint. You know, it's the same thing as doing this. Oh, okay. But but a lot cleaner because it's not messing up your code. Right. If, you know, things that you may potentially forget and commit later. <laughs> Nobody ever does that. We talk about. Oh no, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's also handy. Something I've done in code a lot is if something might error error out, and I don't know exactly how it might error. I could do a try accept, um, and just make it like a bare accept, and put a breakpoint inside of that, so that if it does ever hit that error, then I get a breakpoint right away, and so mm -hmm. I can try to figure out what that error actually, you know, why that happened. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so now we can also use where to see where we are in the stack. So at the, the bottom of this, you can see, okay, this is where I actually am. I'm in tamtransfer.py line 89 uh, in the prep data function. The prep data function was called at line 44 in the grab data function. Grab data was called at line 178 in the last week function. And then that was called, you know, it keeps going all the way up the stack and we can traverse our way up through the stack even. So if, um, 
you know, I'm trying to figure out why some data is set the way that it is. Um, it wasn't necessarily set in its function, it was just kind of passed along. We can hit up a couple times and you can see um, it's changing exactly where I am. And so I can investigate at this point what's going on. Um, so let's see if I want to see what the args are here. They're empty. Um, anyway, I can go through and see what each thing actually is. You know, to help me, really helps with debugging something. Mm -hmm. uh, if you keep hitting up all the way, eventually you get up to the top of the stack and it says oldest frame there. Mm -hmm. um, and then you can keep going down. And through all this, you can, you know, you can use next, you can use step, you get lost in the code somewhere. And there's, I've done that so many times and I have to just quit the, the PDB and start <laughs> over back at the first line, just so I know where I am. Right. Uh, if we hit down all the way, eventually we get down to the newest frame, which is where we actually hit the breakpoint. Now oh, I got ahead of myself there. That was the next slide. So up for you to go up the stack, down, or do you to go down the stack? Now in this debugger, we also can do interact. And this gives us a lot more fun, you know, allows us to do a lot more with the Python so that we can even create functions, do things on multiple lines like if statements, um, because with PDB, we can't, we can't do that. So like if we want to say if five is greater than 10 and we try to write a function, then it, you know, it just won't let us do that. So I can type in interact and I'm going to create a function, just something really simple to find a function called multiply. And I forgot the colon at the end, very important. Uh, so now you can see on the left, instead of the little arrows there, I have little dots. Um, so I'm going to do four spaces just as if I were writing code and return a times B. Hmm. Now I return or I hit enter return. Um, you can see I still have the three little dots. So it's still expecting that I'm in that function until I go down one more line. And now we have the, the prompt back. So hmm. I can now call that function that I just wrote. pass at five and six and I get 30 out. Mm -hmm. um, now the variables in context here are also available. So wherever I am at the breakpoint, uh, like T billable, you know, that's there too. So if I want to do something with that um, in whatever function I'm writing here or anything I want to test, um, I can use all of those variables that are available. That, that you've gotten to up to that point in, in your stepping. Right. Gotcha. So I just, um, I exited out of interact by doing control D. Um, so like if I need to see, okay, what variables are available, I can do dir, I can type interact again, and then actually do something with those. So when you control D back into PDB, is, multiple, is that multiply function available to you in, in there as well? Uh, good question. I was just wondering that myself. It's gone now. So yeah, once you control D out, then anything you put in there is gone. Gotcha, okay. All right, so, so far we have just looked at regular PDB straight out of the box, if you want to call it, um, from Python. Uh, but there are other options available that pretty, they're basically working on top of PDB. So one is called PDB++. If you want to install it, uh, you do pip install PDB PP because you can't view the, the plus plus names. Mm -hmm. um, so I have separate environments here with each of these so that we can see you know, what each one looks like. So here in this one, I'm going to run the script the same way as I did before. Um, the difference here is that I have installed PDB++, uh, did a pip install. So that's running through the point up into you know, my break point. You can see this looks a little bit different than what we had before. It's showing me a lot more context. It's you know, filling up the whole screen so that I can see everything. Mm -hmm. um, another really nice thing that most, you know, these other ones 
pretty much all have that PDB does not is tab completion. So like if I start typing in a variable name and hit tab, it's going to finish that variable name for me hmm. and I can hit enter and see what that looks like. Um, I think, and I'm sure there are other advantages to using PDB++. I don't know them off the top of my head, but I just wanted to show really quick what, you know, some of these other ones look like. So that's PDB++. Otherwise, all the commands work the same. There is PUDB. Um, this one's a little bit different. So I'm going to run, you know, instead of the dash M PDB, I'm going to pass in PUDB. PUDB. <laughs> And this one is way different. This one has a lot more of a GUI to it. So I can, I'm hitting the arrow keys to go up and down. Mm. Um, you can see that this one actually has saved some previous data from when I've run this before, because down here in the lower right, it, there are breakpoints there that I had previously set. Um, it's showing that there are breakpoints at line two, line 11, and I can see that up here too, the little red dot. Um, as far as where the breakpoints are. So if I want to go go down to one, um, I hit B and that put in a breakpoint there if I want it, or I can hit B again and take it out. Hmm. Uh, if I want to get down to the command line, I can do Control X. Um, but this one works a little bit differently. I don't remember how to actually get through the breakpoints. I haven't played with this one much, but mm. I figured, you know, I show this off. Some people might really be interested in it. Like, hey, that looks awesome. I want to use that. <laughs> um, and it does have settings to it. So like when you started up the very first time, it's going to ask you some questions of what kind of settings you want. And actually, I took a screenshot of that. Let me grab that here. You can see what that looks like. Um, the preferences, like it, it asks you if you want to show the line numbers or not. Uh, prompt before quitting. And I think there are some other preferences that are available as well that, you know, that can be set and adjusted later. So that one is PUDB. And then the last one I have that I was going to show is BPDB, which is BPython. Um, yeah, showing that here, it's called BPDB, but you would pip install BPython for this. So I'm going to run the script. Uh, I don't have to pass it anything. And it's going to hit the first breakpoint that I have. Um, this is all very similar to regular PDB. Uh, this part does not do the tab completion. But uh, you can see here it says use capital B to enter BPython. And so now at this point, now I do have the tab completion. Um, so if I start typing in current line, and you can see it has even that nice hmm, interface yeah. that it gave us there. Um, now, you can't use the regular PDB commands here. It's kind of like the, using interact. Um, let's go down a few lines and go back in. So if I want to use one of those variables that starts with T under, you can see there it has my tab completion. And sorry, the colors aren't great here. Um, but it's showing me already. I haven't even hit tab yet. It's showing me what variables are available that um, start with that. Hmm. And so that's what that looks like. Nice. And that one also uses Control D to exit out of the, the B Python. Um, so I have a couple links here, Python module of the week uh, to learn more about PDB. Um, also just general, uh, another Pi video talking about PDB. And I may more I may add some more links in here before I actually put these slides online. I'll probably put them up on SlideShare. Yeah, if if you could get me those those links on the SlideShare link, then I'll put those in the show notes as well. Okay. Yep, I can do that. That'll be awesome. Cool. All right. So that's what I've got. Okay. Um. Uh, one. So there was one last question that I was saving to the end, and I'm actually going to modify it a little bit. The question was, how does BDP compare with the uh, debugger native to VS Code? I'm I'm actually going to ask. Uh, Specifying specifically to VS Code doesn't seem very fair, uh, you know. To, to we'll, we'll open that up to Vim and and PyCharm and you know all that other stuff. Why why would somebody use this um, on, in conjunction with or or complementary to uh, an IDE's debugger? Yeah, I mean, if you have an IDE debugger, that's what you're used to. 
you know, I would I would run with that. But this is nice because it's going to work. You know, if you happen to be on a new machine or someone else's computer, you know, that's it's always going to work that way, even if they're using a different a different editor. Yeah, um, I, I have really not like used the right one. Way. Yeah, I have not used the one in VS Code yet. I've got, but I'm also so used to just using PDB mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that that I haven't really ventured out and used anything else because it works for me. It seems super convenient. I mean, you can just fire it up regardless of, of what you're trying to get to it from. Mm -hmm. Nice. Uh, cool. Well, hold on. Let me... Um, okay, one other thing. Somebody else popped up. Uh, nope. Nope. Okay. There was, there was just... just a, uh, it, was a, it was a thank you, awesome session comment. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Cool. Excellent. Um, all right. Let me, let me double check uh, the tweetosphere to make mm -hmm. sure that nobody has said anything in there. Oops. And I and I have to say I feel um, significantly better uh, when when you forgot to put the colon in there. I literally do that all the time, and uh, I was like, when am I going to get good enough to stop doing that? And you, you know, the the grandmaster wizard of of, uh, of Python and and all things coding, did that, and I was like, oh, well, I I, I don't I don't feel nearly as uh, as dumb. Well, no, actually that's not true. I always feel dumb, but uh, I feel slightly better that that you do that too. So. <laughs> <laughs> yes, even people that have been doing Python for years still make mistakes like that, still use <laughs> Stack Overflow, have to look up certain things all the time. <laughs> cool. Awesome. All right. Um, uh, the Tweetosphere is clear. Um, several thank yous and job well dones and huzzas uh, from, from the audience and from, from the Tweeter Spheres. Um, that, was, that was fantastic. Chrissy, thank you very much. Uh, for, yeah, for thanks for having me. Tonight. Cool. All right, everybody. Um, well, uh, thanks for attending another uh, session. Uh, next week, um, I, I will I will be announcing. I can't remember off the top of my head who's who's on next week, but I will be announcing that on Twitter, like I always do. Um, everybody, have a great night, Chrissy. Thank you again. Mm -hmm.